Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Alda Kodash from One Nation, One Power. And I want to give all honor and glory to the Most High Ahaya in the mighty name of Yeshaya and the Ruach Kodash. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to come with a lesson. Uh, my last lesson was uh, John 3.16, the breakdown. And I did it, you know, um, for the new people that are on my channel, the Christians I'm trying to come to the truth, trying to learn the truth. And uh, I had a question. Um, can the Gentiles be saved or have salvation? And I wanted to give a, a detailed lesson on that. And, uh, you know, in Christianity, you know, when we were in Christianity before we came to the it came to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, I'm just going to talk in my perspective. Um, I was taught that salvation meant, you know, uh, going to heaven. Okay. So that's what salvation means. And, and uh, you know, and other people, you know, asked around yesterday in my class, um, uh, and other people answered that um, they were taught that sal all you had to do is call in the name of uh, Jesus and, you know, you, you receive salvation. Okay. But according to the Bible, okay, it means a whole different thing. Okay. And I'm going to bring it out today and um, I'm going to get right into it. Okay. And... Um, this is going to the question, uh, can uh, Gentiles receive salvation? All right. And this is natural, the natural Gentile. You know, you got the Africans, you got the so-called white man, you got the Chinese, you got, you know, all these particular people. Okay. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to go to, uh, first I want to go to uh, Isaiah 28. Follow me, Isaiah 28. Go ahead and write these scriptures down. Um, Isaiah 28, we know the first uh, first verse. We're going to read uh, verse 9 and 10. Okay, this is how you're supposed to break down the Bible according to, you know, Scripture. All right. This is uh, Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, and it reads, Whom shall he teach knowledge? Question mark. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are winged from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay, so basically the, these people that have got off milk, okay, that have got off the breast, okay, this, this is who he's going to teach uh, knowledge, okay, the correct doctrine according to the Most High. And it says, verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, so precepts, okay, which means command, okay, um, we're going to be jumping around from scripture to scripture and you're going to see how it matches up. Okay, precept upon precept, witness upon witness. Okay, we're going to break it down. Okay, I need this witness, you need to always need two witnesses, and then, you know. And, and you got to keep it in context, okay? And whatever passage of scripture you're reading, keep it in context and have, you know, multiple witnesses, you know, two or three witnesses that every word will be established, okay? So you're going to see me jumping back and forth in the Bible, but you're going to see how I'm matching it all up, all right? So the first scripture we're going to go to, okay? We're going to go to Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. Okay, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. So write these scriptures down. We're going to go for a ride. So Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. All right. And it reads, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation. I'm going to read that again. And see the salvation, right? 
of the Most High, which he shall show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see no more, no more again. Excuse me. Ye shall see them again no more forever. Okay, this is the time of Moses. When Moses was going back to Egypt to do the Most High's work to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. Okay, so when you read this in context and in chronological order, all right, Moses uh, was telling the people, this is your salvation. Okay, meaning that this is, you're going to come out of captivity. Okay. So when you uh, actually look up the Hebrew definition for salvation, I'm going to get the number. It's H3444, okay, and it comes from the word deliverance. All right, this is the Hebrew de uh, Strong's Concordance definition, and it comes from the word deliverance. All right, so when you read that story, you read that, read that context, salvation meant deliverance, okay, or coming out of captivity to the children of Israel. Okay, they remember there were slaves to the Egyptians. Okay, so now what I want to do is get another precept to prove my point. One or two witnesses, right? So now let's go to Luke, <clears throat> Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. We'll go to the New Testament. Okay, and this is Luke chapter 1, and I'm going I'm to start at verse 67. And it reads, and his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying. So in that context right there, Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't him talking. It was the Holy Spirit talking through him. All right. Let's keep going. Verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Verse 69, and has raised up a horn of salvation. There goes that word again, salvation, right? For us in the house of his servant David, okay, meaning the children of Israel. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, since have, excuse me, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies. I'm going to read that again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hand of all that hate us. Okay? So again, we're in captivity right now. Okay? When, when um, let's just say Jesus, okay, our Christ, that's what the world knows him as, Okay, we know his real name. Uh, when he comes back, all right, he's going to deliver the children of Israel out of their captivity, which means salvation. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time, verse 69. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us, meaning the children of Israel, in the house of his servant David. All right, verse 71, jump down verse 7, that we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hand, from all the hand of all that hate us. Okay, so again, just like Moses, okay, we had to be saved out of, we had to have salvation out of uh, uh, the Egyptian captivity, okay, and now this is talking about when Christ comes back. He's going to pull us out of this captivity, which is salvation. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And this is a, a perfect example of why we're going to go to what Yeshia said, or Jesus Christ, whatever your flavor is. <clears throat> we're going to go to uh, John 4 and 22. John 4 and 22. And the context is, is uh, the Yeshia, he's he's talking to the Samaritan woman, okay? And I'm just going to, I'll start at verse 21. This is John chapter 4, verse 21. And I'm going to go all the way to 22. It says, I'm going to read it as it is. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh 
when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22, ye worship, ye know not what. For, excuse me, we know what we worship for salvation. There goes that word again. For salvation is of the Jews, is of the Jews, is of the Jews. It didn't say is of the Hittites, is of the Edomites, is of the Perizzites. It didn't say that. It said of the Jews. And why? Who was ruling at this time? The Romans. Okay. This is why Yeshia said this. He said, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay. We're the ones in bondage. We're the ones trying to come back to our power. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're in captivity. Okay, just like how I said earlier, the Egyptians to, you know, to this bondage and to that bondage, which they were in bondage to Rome. Okay, so this is why he points out the Jews. He didn't say everybody. So if you believe in that John 3, 16 uh, doctrine, that Christianity, you know, says the whole world. So this is just cuts it. Okay, because he only said one Pacific people. All right. According to scripture, not in my own private interpretation. All right. And let's let's go to the book of Acts and see how the the the, the disciples knew this. All right. Let's go to Acts chapter one. And we're going to go to. I'm going to read six and seven. Six and seven. And it reads. All right. Acts chapter one, verse six and seven. And it reads when they. Therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Okay, so the disciples asked the Messiah a question. At this time, will you restore the kingdom of Israel? Meaning, coming out of captivity and going back to our land. Okay, and restoring everything. Okay, because they knew the prophecies. That was that without that is our salvation. Okay. Um they knew this. Let's read verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Okay, it's not it's not for us to know the times or the season, Yeshua was saying, but he did not tell the disciples, no, we're not going to uh, restore the kingdom of Israel. We're not going to do it. He didn't give them that answer. It's not, it's not time yet. Okay, so the disciples knew that salvation was coming, but not at that time. All right, we, they wanted to come out of captivity. All right, so the disciples knew what time it was. All right, so now let's go to Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. Romans 11 and verse 11. Let's get it. Romans 11 and verse 11. Got these new tabs, man. Okay, here we go. Romans 11 and verse 11. All right. All right, Romans 11 and verse 11, it says, I say then, have they stumbled? that they should fall. So when you read the context of this scripture, it's talking about the, the children of Israel. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Question mark. God forbid. So the Most High say no. Okay. But rather through their fall, salvation. It goes that word again. Salvation. All right. Is coming to the Gentiles. Okay. This is talking about the other nations. Uh, for to provoke them to jealousy. Okay, so salvation. Okay, again, who is ruling right now? Okay, America. And then it went down to Rome. Then it went down to Greece. Then it went down to the Persians. Then it went down to the Babylonians. Okay, all these nations have ruled and have had their salvation. That's what that means. 
okay? Time and rulership, all right? But for what? To provoke us to jealousy. This is why, all right? And we're going to get a precept to prove that this, this was in the Old Testament, that Paul is quoting this from the Old Testament. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let me get my phone real quick. <clears throat> Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. This is the priest. This is where Paul was quoting from. All right. This is Deuteronomy 32 and 21. Okay, write this precept down. It says, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Okay, this is how the children of Israel fell because they went into idolatry. Okay, they started following the worships of other nations, all right? They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I have, and I will move them to jealousy, just like in Romans 11, 11, right? With those that are not a people, with those that are not a people, proving that those are Gentile, natural Gentiles, okay? I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Okay, so when you go back to Romans 11 and 11, okay, talking about that the Gentiles had their, uh, the, 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 uh, the salvation came to the Gentiles to provoke us to jealousy, that's what happened, okay? Okay, so to answer that person's question, salvation only means, okay, it doesn't, only means uh, coming out of captivity or having a time to rule. Okay, because at the end of all this, in Daniel chapter 7, it says the saints shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. Okay, and that's salvation. Okay, but that's an everlasting salvation. Let me get that real quick. Let me get that real quick. So I'll prove my point. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 45, 45, 17. Isaiah 45, 17. Isaiah 45, 17, it says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, a world without end. So Israel going to have an everlasting salvation. That means we're going to rule forever. Okay. These other nations have their salvation. Okay. The other nations, they're in their salvation right now. Okay. When we come into salvation, we're going to have a kingdom set up during Christ's reign. All right. And we're going to be setting up things. We're going to have servants. Just like how today is, you know, with, with our people being servants. Okay, you got the tribe of Judah, you got the Israelites, you got, you know, all these tr tribal members doing servitude to them. Okay, meaning that's their, that's their salvation. All right, that's all that means. All right, <clears throat> and I'm going to prove my point. Okay, um, just to prove my point, let's go to Lamentations 5 and 8. Lamentations 5 and 8. Lamentations 5 and 8. Okay. I'm going to start at verse 1. Lamentations 5. And we're going to start at verse 1. Okay. It says, Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Talking about the Israelites. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. Okay, so when we fell as a nation, the other nations received salvation. Okay, through our fall. Okay, and it says right here in Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 2, our inheritance is turned to strangers. 
Our houses to aliens, talking about the other nations. Strangers, aliens refer to the other nations, okay, in certain contexts. And it reads, we are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us, okay? Uh, our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We, we labor and have no rest. Even in today's time, we work in what? 80 to uh, 70 hours a week. Okay, sometimes 90. I mean, just to make ends meet. I mean, and then our, you know, our forefathers, they went through slavery. You know, this is what happened. This is what's going on. This is their salvation. They're, this is their time to rule. All right. I'm going to jump down to verse seven. It says, our fathers have sinned and are and are not talking about our fathers have sinned back in the Old Testament. This is why all this came upon us and we have borne their iniquity. Servants have ruled over us. I'm going to read that again. Servants have ruled over us. OK, because the prophecy goes that we shall be the head. If we would have kept all the commandments of the Most High, we would have been the head and they would have been the tail. Uh, the tail. OK, we were always meant to rule over all the nations because why? Because we was given the law, statutes and the commandments. That's why. <clears throat> but it says right here, servants have ruled over us. There is none that doeth deliver us out of their hands. OK, until, you know, Yeshua comes back, you know, that's the case. OK, but we're coming to the knowledge of the truth and we're finding out, you know, what is wrong and what is right. Okay, so according to scripture, salvation is only uh, a time to rule, okay, which they have their salvation. They're in their salvation once you understand that. Okay, when Christ comes back, he's going he's gonna to set up his kingdom, all right, <clears throat> and that's going to be our salvation. So salvation only pertains uh, to the Israelites, okay, but let's keep going, I'm, uh, and I'm going to explain what the Gentiles are going to be doing. All right. The, the, the ones that, you know, have come into the fold and have kept the commandments. OK, but let me get Jeremiah 16, 19. Jeremiah 16, 19. Jeremiah 16 and verse 19. Jeremiah 16, 19. And it reads, O Lord, my strength and my fortress. And my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall surely and surely say, our fathers have inherited lies, vanity and things wherein there is no profit. OK, so these are the Gentiles proclaiming that their forefathers have inherited lies. OK, and, you know. This prophecy is actually coming to life right now as we speak, okay? Because all you got to do is, you know, click on the internet, you know, and there'll be a bunch of Gentiles, you know, telling telling uh, people, you know, Israelites and, you know, Israelites, you know, their people about who are the real Israelites, okay? Who are the real, you know, Judah, the tribe of Judah, you know, who this Bible belongs to. OK, um, they're, they're walking out of Christianity. They're not being deceived no more. This is this prophecy. OK, we have those people waking up, which are the Gentiles. OK, excuse me, but their fathers have inherited lies. And the biggest lie, you know, is in Christianity. OK, they believe that, you know, they're going to get raptured. You know, they believe that salvation pertains to everybody okay you know pertain go uh, salvation means going to heaven and all this stuff no that doesn't mean that okay <clears throat> so this is why i'm doing this video but one thing that we have to understand is this okay especially you gentiles okay that the most high is righteous all right and we're gonna see why he is righteous so let's go to Revelations 13 10. Revelations 13 and 10. Revelations 
13 to 10. Now let's read. Okay, we're going to go on and read it. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, so all the nations that have, okay, been since Babylon, okay, till now. You got to think of all of them. All right. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay, so it's, you know, I don't have to explain it. It's, it is what it is. The Most High is righteous. Okay, he, he, he's, he's going to defend his people. All right. So whoever killed us with the sword must be killed with the sword. Whoever put us into captivity is going into captivity. So that's showing you not all the Gentiles will be killed. Okay, because some of them won't go into captivity. Those that, you know, are going to be, uh, you know, uh, handmaids and maidens. All right. <clears throat> someone got to clean up the earth. Someone got to, you know, I and mean, that's not us. We're going to be rolling, worshiping. You know, putting things in order. You know what I'm saying? That's what our job is. Our job was only to pray to the Most High and worship Him. That was our job in the beginning. The whole time. All right? Just like we read in uh, Lamentations 5 and 8, servants have ruled over us. They were always known as our servants. Always. But through our through losing our inheritance, through generations of not learning the truth, we became the servants, okay? But now we're, we're coming back, all right? So he that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword, all right? Let's, let's, see, let's see some of the stuff that they did, all right? This is why they're going to go into captivity, all right? Let's go to uh, Nahum 3 and 1. Nahum 3 and 1. This. Okay, this is Naham 3 and 1, and it reads, Woe to the bloody city. Woe to the bloody city. Okay, woe means war. Okay, to the bloody city. It is all full of lies. All full of lies. So when we look at this scripture, what do we think about? We think about when they came over to America and killed all our ancestors, okay, this place turned into a bloody city, all right? And it says it is full of lies. Everything you learn here is a lie, okay? When you do history and you do research on things pertaining to America in history, all come down to lies. And that's what we're finding out right now. Because this is the history. This is the truth. Once we really figure out how, how, how to break this down. Okay. And it says, it is full of lies and robbery. Didn't they rob it from us, this land? You know, of course, the Most High had a hand on it. Right. But they still, you know, this, this scripture still pertains to them. Okay. And it says, they, they pray departeth not their prey departeth not meaning that they're always looking out to get us okay and you could turn on your television you go on the internet and just do research and see that our people are still out there dying our people are still out there you know having a hard time okay dealing in this nation but once we come back to the law such and the commandments know who our god is we'll be good okay and then, you know, coming out of captivity, all right, which 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 is our salvation, all right? <clears throat> so now, let's get some more scriptures showing you that the Most High is going to uh, reverse the curses, okay? Just like the curses were pertaining to us, okay, they're going to fall on, the, on, on our enemies. Let's get the scripture. Let's go to, once we get right with the Most High. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. 
This is all Bible I'm giving you. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm going to start at verse 1. And it says, and it, came, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the cursings which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has driven thee. Okay, as prophecy, we're calling them to mind right now because we're in another land. We're not in our land. Okay, we're in another land. Verse 2, and it says, And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 3, that, that, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. So if we come to the Most High with all our heart and all our soul, he going to turn our captivity, right? And have compassion upon thee. And will return and gather thee from all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. If any of thy thy be driven out unto a, unto the most outmost parts of heaven, if he be driven out to the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee, and the most high thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Okay, that's our salvation. Okay, he's going to take us out of this captivity and bring us into the land. Okay, that's what I've been saying. All right, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and will multiply thee above thy fathers. Okay, so he's going to give us more than our forefathers had when we go back to the land. Verse 6, and the Most High thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed. Okay, and that's going back to the, 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 the new covenant. Okay, talking about uh, when you go to Hebrews 8 and 8, that the law is going to be in our, our hearts, our minds. Okay, he's going to give us a willing heart to serve him. All right, and it, and it says the heart of thy seed. And it says, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Verse 7, And the Most High thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies. All these curses upon thy enemies. And on them that hate thee. On them that hate thee. So everybody that hates you, okay, Looking you up and down because you may be a darker complexion than other people, okay? Uh, which persecute thee, okay? So all these curses are going to come on the other nations, okay? Once we, uh, once we get delivered out of this captivity, okay? And you you kind of see it changing just a little bit, but not fully. It it takes a process. But when he comes back and he gets us out of this captivity, all the curses will come upon the other nations. Okay, as it is written. All right. <clears throat> so let's see the curses. Okay, because when you think about the curses, okay, I'm just going to quote one. Deuteron uh, it's in Deuteronomy 28 that we shall be the head and they shall be the tail. So when you reverse that, they shall be the I mean, we shall be the head and they shall be the tail. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example of what's going to happen to them. Okay, let's go to, we're going to go to, let's go to Amos. Amos 9, Amos chapter 9. This is what's going to happen. All right, these are the ones that are, you know, Trying to, trying to keep the commandments, trying to, you know, okay, because when we're in the kingdom, right, if they don't know the commandments, how are they going to serve us food? You know what I'm saying? They're going to give us crab, lobsters, you know, all this unclean food. They don't, they don't have to know the law to, 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 to serve us, right? So these are the people that are going to uh, be doing the commandments, you know, Trying to uh, be a part of of us, but they're not going to be up. They're not, they're not going to be us. They're going to be servants. Okay. So now we're going to go to Amos nine, and we're going to prove my point. 
We're going to read 11 and 12, and it reads, In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David, okay, bringing all the 12 tribes together, that is, fallen, and, and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up the ruins, and I will build it uh, as in the days of old, that they, meaning the children of Israel, may possess the remnant of Edom, okay, there's going to be a remnant of Edom, and of all the nations which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Okay, so that's not in my opinion, that's what's going to happen. The children of Israel, once they come out of captivity, okay, this is Christ's kingdom, okay, we will possess the remnant of Edom and all the other heathen nations, okay, we're going to possess them. What are we going to possess them as? Let's get it. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah, let me get that up. Okay, Isaiah 14 right here. Isaiah 14. And we're going to read one through three. And it says, For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob, meaning the 12 tribes, and will yet choose Israel. So he's going to choose Israel regardless. And set them in their own land. So this is going to be in our land. Okay. During the time of Christ's reign. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Okay. So these other nations are going to cleave unto us. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Okay, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land. What land? Jerusalem. Of the Lord, of the Lord. We know that's Jerusalem. For servants and handmaidens, and they shall take them captive, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Most High shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Okay, so going back to Deuteronomy 30, you're going to flip all the curses, okay, and he's going to put it on them, and they're going to serve. It's just going to be, it's going to be the total opposite now. They're the, we're going to have our own government system. We're going to have our kingdom. Christ going to be the head, you know, man in charge, okay, and these, and these other nations are going to be servants. That's what it says. All right. And we will, when we will have our rest. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <clears throat> let's see. Let's, let's go to, and then, you know how it said in Amos, uh, it said the remnant of Edom and the other nations. Right. Let's get an example of the other nations. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 45, 14. Isaiah 45, 14. Isaiah 45, 14, and it reads, Thus says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchants of Ethiopia and of the Sibians, men of stature. Okay, and it's talking about the real Egyptians. All okay? right, the ones that are in Egypt right now aren't the real ones because these are men of stature, the real tall. Okay, and it says, shall come over unto thee. Okay, meaning the Israelites. So these people are going to come unto the Israelites. And it says, and they shall be thine. And they shall be thine. And they shall be thine. So we're going to have them for a possession. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over. So they're going to come in chains. They're going to be chained up and come over, right? <clears throat> unto thee. And they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely the Most High is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Okay, so that's a specific reason why they're going to come unto us. Okay, because they're going to know that the Most High is with us. Okay, they, they're going to want a chance to... Um, I'm not going to use the word saved because that doesn't pertain to them, 
but they want a chance to serve us. Okay, that's their servitude. Okay, that's their job. They're gonna clean up the earth for us. Okay, and we're just gonna be chilling, having our rest. All right. So all of this, everything that they set up is gonna be destroyed. Okay, but at this time we're gonna possess the Egyptians also. All right. <clears throat> so now let's keep going. Let's go to. Let me see. We're gonna go to. Uh, we're gonna go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah twenty nine fourteen. Jeremiah 29.14. I just want to get some more precepts and prove my point. Jeremiah 29.14. Okay. Jeremiah 29.14. And it reads, <clears throat> And I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. OK, and I just want to grab that scripture to confirm again, Jeremiah chapter uh, 29, 14. Okay, this is a prophecy that he going to take us out of captivity. And you can also write Jeremiah 30 and 3, Jeremiah 30 and 10, and Jeremiah 33 and 7. Okay, so now let's get some scriptures of what's going to happen in the kingdom. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Let's go. Isaiah chapter 60. And we're going to start at verse. I'm going to read. I'm going to read one through three, and then I'm going to jump down to verse eight. And it reads, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of thy, the Lord is raised upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And glory and gross darkness, the people, excuse me, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Okay, the most high gonna have his glory on us. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to thy brightness of thy rising. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen in the kingdom. All right. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to jump down to verse 8. Uh, who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Okay, excuse me. This is not in the kingdom. Uh, this right here is talking about, okay, I'm read that again. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Okay, so we know what a, cl what a, what a cloud is. All right. Who are these that fly as a cloud? Can you hear a cloud flying? That's the question. Can you hear a cloud flying? No, you can't. They just move, right? And it says, and as the doves to their windows. We know windows are portals. All right. The doves to their windows. What is this talking about? Okay. Let's get the let's let's get the precept real quick. Let's get the precept. Those that made me new. Get the precept. Uh, Psalms 10. Let me see. I believe it's Psalms 105. <clears throat> no, Psalms 104 and 3. Let me just read this precept. This goes to the precept, right? Talking about the clouds. And it says, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariots? Who walketh upon the wings of the air? Okay, when you think about that, okay, uh, the clouds his chariots. Okay, this is actually, an, 
what people call a UFO, all right? This is what it's talking about, his ships, all right? This is talk, This is the precept. He's talking about his chariots. He's going to come back in his chariots, all right? <clears throat> so it says, who are these that fly as a cloud? Talking about his chariots. And as the doves to their windows, okay? Windows are portals. Okay, he's asking the question, who are these? It says, verse 9, surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far. Okay, the ships. So are these boats? No, they're not. They're actual ships, okay, that will bring thee from far. All right, let's keep going. Their silver and their gold with them. Okay, so when they come get us, all right, we're going to take their silver and their gold. The Gentiles, all right? And it says, um, silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Most High God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified thee. Verse 10, and the sons of strangers, talking about the other nations, shall build up thy walls and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath, I smote thee. But in my favor, I have had mercy upon thee. Verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continuously. Talking about the kingdom. Okay. Christ's kingdom. The gates shall be open, open, open continuously. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be, be brought. Okay, so <clears throat> there's going to be, the gates are going to be open in Christ's kingdom, all right? The Gentiles are going to come in with their silver and their gold as presents for the Christ, Yeshia. Okay, this is what it's saying. Okay, and it says, verse, verse 12, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Okay, for the nation and the kingdom that shall not ser serve thee shall perish. So whoever's out there of the other nations that are not that are not going to be in proper order with the kingdom of Christ, they're going to perish. If they don't want to do that. If they don't want to be told what to do. All right. And it says, yea, those nations shall utterly waste. Those nations shall utterly waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree and the pine tree and the box thereof together to the beauty, the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. So all of those people, all right? that have afflicted us, all right? And all thy despised thee shall bow themselves down to the sole of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, okay? So that's showing you a prophecy that he's going to gather us in the chariots, all right? Then we're going to come to the kingdom of Christ, all right? And the gate shall be open, and all the forces of the Gentiles, all their gold, everything that they have, they will present it to the Messiah. Okay? And all the Gentiles will be subject unto us. And, then, and if they don't want to serve us, they shall utterly perish. Okay? This is not what a brother, brother, brother Kodash is saying. This is what the Bible is saying. All right? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So now let's go to Isaiah 61, and we're going to read 4 through 9. Okay, this is also in the kingdom. All right, and, it's, and it reads, And they shall build up the old waste, uh, waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities and desolation of many generations. So who is this talking about? Let's keep reading. We're going to find out who's going to be doing this. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of aliens shall be your plowmen, and your 
uh, vine dresser. So that answered the question. The strangers are the ones that are going to serve the other nations. They're going to be feeding your flocks. They're, the aliens shall dress your, uh, do your gardens, basically. It says, but ye shall be named the priest of the Most High. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye bo boast yourself. So you're, gonna, you, you're telling me that I'm going to have a time to be boasting of who I am and what I'm doing in Christ's kingdom. That's what the Bible's saying. All right. And it says, for your shame, ye shall have double. So all our shame in the past, we're going to have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. And I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Talking about the children of Israel, Isaiah 45 and 17. An everlasting salvation or an everlasting covenant, right? Verse 9, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offspring among the people, all that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. So all the Gentiles, okay, that are serving, they're going to acknowledge us. Okay, this is Christ's kingdom. Okay, and, then, and, and verse 7 is also showing you that we have a righteous God. Just like we, we talked about before. Uh, he that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And this is his vengeance. All right. He's going to set it up like this. And he's going to have, you know, all the cursing will be reverses, reversed and fall out. All the cursing will come on them and all the blessings will come on us. But this is everlasting, brothers and sisters. Okay. Everlasting. They're not going to ever get a chance to rule again or have their salvation. All right. <clears throat> um, let's get one more. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. I actually want to get two more. Zechariah chapter 8. Let me see. Zechariah. Let's get it. Zechariah chapter 8. This is going to be in the kingdom. All right. In Jerusalem during Christ's reign. Isaiah chapter or Zechariah chapter 8, and I'm gonna start at verse 22. It says, Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord at, at uh, of host in Jerusalem. Okay, so Yeshua gonna be in Jerusalem. Okay, this is when he comes back and establishes everything. All right, and it says, and to pray before the Lord. Verse 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Okay, these are talking about Gentile. They're going to take hold of a Jew. Okay, it says, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Okay, so they're going to be willing. They're going to be wanting to serve us. They're going to be wanting to, uh, you know, accept, uh, be our servants, basically. Okay. It's going to be in their heart to do this. All right. <clears throat> so that's another prophecy during Christ's kingdom. Okay. Christ's going to set up the earth back up how it needs to be. Okay. And after that thousand years is over, he's going to give it to the Father. All right. I'm going to show you. Where the Gentiles going to be at, okay, because uh, in order to have servants, okay, just like how America is set up right now, or, you know, back in the days when, when they when they would have slaves, they, where would they keep the slaves at? In the back house, right? And then the slaves would, you know, come in and make all the food and this and that. They're going to be the same thing, all right? So let's get Revelations 11 and Revelations chapter 11. Revelations chapter 11. It's going to be a righteous servitude, all right? 
according to scripture. All right. And it's, uh, this is Revelation chapter 11 and verse one and two. And it says, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of the most high and the altar and them that worship therein. OK, them that worship therein. Talking about a temple. OK. And it says. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. Okay, so like I said, they're going to be on the outer court. Okay, and I have a five. This is, this is how it's going to be. See, this is the temple in Jesus' day. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, so this is the temple in Jesus' day. This is the let me see. This is the outer court, which is the for the Gentiles. Okay. This is the court, the Israel court. All right. The priest, the inner court. Okay. So it's gonna be something like that. All right. This is this is an example. All right. All right. So <clears throat> that's their that's their. So in, in, in a nutshell, okay, salvation is only pertaining to those that are in captivity, okay, the Israelites, okay, um, but the Gentiles going to have to serve, okay. I pulled out many scriptures for you. Um, I pray that you get the understanding, okay, and uh, I'm probably going to make another video, all right, um, just to show you, um, you know, what the Gentiles have to do. Like it just basically they have to keep the commandments, okay? Um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, in order to serve us, they're gonna have to, you know, if they want to give us something to eat, they're gonna have to know the law. They're gonna have to know that we can't eat nothing that's dead, we can't eat pork, uh, lobster, shrimp, okay? They're gonna have to know certain rules, all right? They're gonna have to know that they can't come, uh, you know, close to the temple. All right, or the inner temple, okay? You know, this is this basic stuff, all right? So I wanna give all glory and honor to the Most High, Ahaya, in the mighty name of Yeshaya. So be it.